Welcome to this new life. We are so excited about you watching this program and I believe with all my heart that God has something extraordinary, something great uh, for you today. And uh, today we have a wonderful friend of mine, a guest speaker, that uh, I know he has a powerful word from God that's going to be right into your life, that's going to be helpful in your life and your situation. So please open up your heart as we invite our guest speaker, Richard Gunning, to come and share the Word of God. It's great to be with you again, and I just love sharing truths with you and all the other people who listen around the world from the Bible, which is the Word of God. You know, the Bible says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of God will abide forever. I love that verse about the Bible. That's what it says about itself. And I find as I read the Bible, that many times the Spirit of God will speak to my heart by the different things that I'm reading. And I love to share those truths, eternal truths, from the Holy Word of God with people in many countries around the world. And I'm so happy that you are joining us today and listening to this broadcast and listening to this message from the Word of God. I want to read some words of Jesus as we find them in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Listen carefully to what Jesus said. He said, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. You know, in this physical world in which we live, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of different roads. Whatever country you live in, I'm sure it's the same. I'm sure there are thousands of roads. Some of them are, are big and wide. And some of them are small and narrow. And these roads are all going in different directions and taking us to different places and taking us to different destinations. And in this physical world, there must be literally millions of roads. I don't know if anybody ever counted them, but there must be a huge number. But in the spiritual world, which is all around us, but which we cannot see, there is another world. There is a world where God is moving, where the angels are moving. It's also the spiritual area where the devil and his demons are also active. There's a spiritual world all around us. And Jesus makes it very clear that in that spiritual world, which we cannot see and feel and touch, in that spiritual world, there are only two roads. You know, if you want to get to the place that you want to go to, it's very, very important that you choose the right road. I came here this morning to this television studio in a car and a driver came and collected me. But as we were setting off for the studio, I knew that he had to be careful to choose the right road. Because if he had chosen the wrong road, we might have ended up somewhere completely different. It's no good just getting in your car and driving and just following different roads if you have no idea where you're going. You need to be careful that you choose the right road to get to the place that you want to go to. And the Bible is very clear that in the spiritual world that is all around us, there's only two roads. There is the road that leads to eternal life. There is the road that God wants us to find and travel on. The road that leads to eternity. The road that leads to heaven, where we will forever be with God and with the holy angels. But there is also another road, and that is the wrong road. That is the bad road that many people choose in life. And Jesus tells us that that is the road 
that leads to destruction. That is the road that leads to hell. And Jesus doesn't want us to end up on that road. And that is why he gave us this clear warning in Matthew chapter 17, or sorry, Matthew chapter 7 and verses 13 and 14. He said, make sure that you choose the right road. You see, when we get to about 70 or 80 years of age, or perhaps a bit older, all of us will die. And then what happens? What will happen after we die? Well, the place where we will spend eternity will be determined by which spiritual road we have been traveling on at the time we die. Either the narrow road that leads to eternal life or the broad road that leads to a place that Jesus and the Bible referred to as hell or the lake of fire. Let me ask you today, as you listen to me speak, which road are you on? Which spiritual road are you traveling on? Do you know? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Jesus said that there's a broad road that leads to destruction or leads to hell. And Jesus said there are many people who are traveling on that road. If that road leads to destruction and it leads to hell, it's amazing that so many people choose to travel on it. But if you're on that road, you can live as you like, you can do as you like, you can sin as much as you want, but ultimately that road leads to hell. What is hell like? You know, Jesus spoke a lot about it. In fact, he gives us quite a lot of information. He told us that it will be a place of eternal torment. He also described it as like a lake of fire. He also told us that the devil and his demons will be there. In fact, Jesus said that this lake of fire was created for the devil and his demons. It was never God's plan and intention for men and women to go there. But if we continue to live in sin and refuse to accept the free gift of God's forgiveness by faith in Jesus Christ, then that is ultimately where we will end up because we have continued to travel on the road that leads to that destination. Jesus said that there is a big gap between heaven and hell. And he said there's no possibility for you to transfer after death from one to the other. Hell is a terrible place. I'm sure nobody would want to go there if they're honest. Nobody would want to finish up in the lake of fire prepared for the devil and his demons. Jesus also spoke about heaven. Heaven is a wonderful place. Heaven is a beautiful place. The Bible tells us that it is a place of great joy and happiness and satisfaction in the presence of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that there is no more sickness in heaven. The Bible tells us that there are no more wars. The Bible says that God will wipe away every tear from the eyes of the people who are there. And the Bible tells us that there is no more death. When we are in heaven, we will experience a wonderful, a tremendous, a beautiful, eternal life which God has prepared for everyone who will believe. You see, heaven is for everyone. Do you know that God wants everyone to be there? It's not just for a few carefully selected people that God likes and grants favor to, and the rest, he wants them to end up in that lake of fire. No, 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 that is not God's plan. That is never 
God's intention. God wants you to go to heaven. God is not willing that anybody should perish and end up in that lake of fire. But the Bible tells us that God wants everybody to be saved. God wants everybody to repent. God wants everybody to turn their back on sin, to get off that road that leads to destruction, and to find the way that leads to eternal life. That's God's plan for you. Some people think that they are fated to end up in that terrible lake of fire. Let me tell you that's not correct. God gives each and every person free will. You have free will and I have free will. And when it comes to spiritual matters, we are also given free will. God has not made us like robots or machines who are just programmed to do exactly what he wants us to do. But when God created the first man and the first woman in the book of Genesis chapter 1, he gave them free will. And God gives you free will and God gives me free will. And we can decide if we want to listen to God and we want to listen to the words of God as they are found in the Bible, if we want to listen to the words of Jesus Christ, who is God come down to earth in human form, we can decide to listen to those words or we can turn their back on them and say, well, I don't believe that. I don't accept that. I'm just going to find my own way to eternal life. But if you want to come to heaven, then you need to do it God's way. You need to find the path you need to find the right road that leads to heaven. And you want to make sure that you are not traveling and living your life on that broad road that leads to destruction. God will allow you to do it if that's what you choose to do. But God wants you to turn around and walk on the road that leads to life and to heaven and to peace and eternity. How do we get onto the road to heaven? Maybe you've been listening to me as I share with you today, and maybe you're thinking, I'm not sure which road I'm on. I think maybe I'm on the road to destruction because I'm just pretty much living my own life and just doing whatever seems right to me. I'm not sure if I'm on the road that leads to heaven. How do we get? on the road to heaven. Jesus talked about a narrow gate. And at that gate stands Jesus Christ, the Son of God who loves us, who came to this earth, who lived a sinless life, who died on a cross for our sins, who rose again, and who will return to this earth in the near future to judge the living and the dead and to decide where we will spend eternity. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God the Father except through me. You see, only Jesus can place us on the road to heaven. Only Jesus can open that gate for our lives here in this life in which we're living now, that will bring us onto the road that leads to heaven. He's the only one who can open that gate for us. He's the only one who can put us on the right road. You see, so many people today, they're trusting in their good works. And they think, if I try to live a good life, if I try to be nice to other people, then surely God will accept me. Surely God will open the gate and let me into his heaven. And other people, they trust in religion. You know, there are many religions out there in the world. And some of them, they teach some good things. And that's good. But religion cannot save us. Religion cannot bring us to God. Religion cannot put us on the narrow road that Jesus spoke about 
that leads to eternal life. You see, religion is the hand of man reaching up, trying to touch God. Religion is something man does. Religion is ceremonies and candles and rules and regulations. Do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. But the gospel of Jesus Christ, which I am talking to you about today, is the hand of God reaching down to save men and women and boys and girls from a lost eternity. God's hand is stretched out to you this morning. And God says, I want to save you. I want to put you on the road that leads to life. I want to change your life. I want to give you a new beginning. I want to give you peace with me. I want to bring you to heaven when you die. But you have to choose to reach out by faith and accept God's offer of salvation, which is only available to us by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. Our good deeds cannot save us. Our religions cannot save us. Sometimes people say to me, Richard, are you religious? And I always answer, no, I'm not religious. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Because religion cannot save. Good works cannot save. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. It says, by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. Did you hear the words of God there? It's not because of your works. It's not your own doing. It's not something that you can work for and achieve but it's a free gift. The free gift of God is salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. Why do more people not travel on the road that leads to heaven? Well, there are different reasons. The first one is this. Some people have never heard about Jesus. Some people have never heard that he is the way, the truth, and the life and that nobody comes to God the Father except through him. Some people have never heard that. That's why we're having these programs. That's why I'm speaking to you right now. That's why many missionaries and preachers and pastors and evangelists, that's why they go out into the world and they hold meetings and they speak on television and they speak on radio and they give out literature. That's why they do these things so that as many people as possible can hear this wonderful message, this life-changing message of salvation and peace with God through faith in Jesus Christ. There's a second group of people. They've heard the message, but they didn't understand it. And that's why I'm trying to explain these things as simply and clearly as I can. Some people have heard, but they don't want to respond. They say, I'll do it later. I'll do it when I'm older. I'll do it before I die. But you see, none of us know when we're going to die. The more times you reject the message, the harder it becomes to receive it. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, and I believe you're hearing his voice through the words from the Bible that I'm sharing with you. It says, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. How do you harden your heart? You harden your heart by rejecting the message that you hear. And each time you reject it, the harder it becomes to accept. Some people are afraid of what other people might say or think about them. And sometimes there is a price to pay for accepting Jesus Christ. Sometimes we can experience opposition and even persecution. 
But Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In John chapter 1 and verse 12, the Bible tells us, To all who believed in his name, that's the name of Jesus, he gave power to become children of God. You see, some people think, well, if I give my life to Jesus, it will be very hard for me to try to serve him and follow him. You know, if you have a bicycle and you come to a very steep hill, it's very hard work to try to get up to the top of that hill because you have to use a lot of strength and a lot of effort to get your bicycle up to the top of the hill. But being a believer in Jesus Christ is not like riding a bicycle up a hill. It's more like sitting in a nice car where the engine does all the work and the engine drives the wheels. When you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to be your Savior, He gives you His power. That's why it says here, He gives power to become the children of God. You don't have to do it in your own effort. Jesus is going to give you the power to serve Him in this life and to walk on the narrow pathway, the narrow road that will bring you ultimately to eternal life. Maybe you've been listening today and you have realized, I'm on the broad road that leads to destruction. I've never trusted in Jesus. I cannot be on the narrow road that leads to eternal life that Jesus talked about. How do I change roads? What must I do to be saved? Well, it's very simple. The first thing to do is to turn around. The Bible uses the word repent. And repent simply means to turn around. You know, if you're going in the wrong direction, either walking or on your bicycle or on your motorbike or in a car, and you suddenly realize I'm going in the wrong direction, what do you do? You stop and you turn around. That's the first step. You need to stop. You need to consider your ways. And you need to make a decision to turn around. The second thing you need to do is to believe. There's something to believe. You see, salvation and forgiveness of sins is by faith. And that means you need to believe. You need to believe that Jesus died for you. You need to believe that when he suffered on the cross, the punishment for your sins, and we've all sinned, the punishment for those sins was taken from you and placed on Jesus Christ on the cross. That's why he died on the cross. Not for his own sins, but for your sins and for my sins. And thirdly, you need to confess. Confess means just to say out loud. You need to declare. You need to declare that Jesus Christ is now your Lord and your Savior. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You'll be taken off the broad road that leads to hell. You'll be put on the narrow road that will bring you to eternal life. Your eternal destiny depends upon which road you choose. The narrow road that leads to life or the broad road that leads to destruction. May God help you today to make the right decision and choose the right road. In Jesus' name. What a powerful word this was. And maybe as you have been watching this program, you realize that Jesus Christ is not your personal savior, that he's not a personal belief in your, in your heart, and you would like to make this decision. Do you know that he's only one prayer away from you? That right where you are at right now, you can open your heart, you can ask Jesus Christ to come and become your personal savior. If you would like to make this decision, Will you then please just 
put your hand upon your heart like this is a decision coming from your inner man, your heart. And then pray this prayer to Jesus together with me right now. Just repeating from your heart this prayer that you and I are going to pray together right now. So let's pray. Jesus Christ, I believe you are the Son of God. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I repent of all my sins and I want to follow you, worship you every day the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. When you prayed this prayer from your heart, Jesus did hear that prayer with his heart. Something has happened. He's now your Savior and he's now your Lord. And now it's just important that you keep yourself close to Jesus every day the rest of your life. And let me give you three simple advices that will help you in doing so. Number one, pray to Jesus every day. It's like talking with your best friend. You can pray to Jesus at any time, at any position, and at any time and any place. Just simply start out saying, Jesus Christ, and then tell him all the good things and all the bad things that you are facing right now. That's praying. Number two, when we read in the Bible, we learn more about Jesus. Maybe you don't have a Bible, but then maybe you have a smartphone. Do you know that you for free can download the entire Bible, even in your own language, and then you have the Word of God? You can start out reading maybe in the Gospel of Luke or Gospel of Mark, and in that way you'll get to know and learn more about Jesus. And the third advice is this, that you need to be part of a fellowship of others who's also following and worshiping Jesus. Maybe you know of some that is doing that. Why don't you contact them and, and say if they can, you and them can have fellowship together uh, and worshiping Jesus together? Or maybe you know of a group or a, a, a fellowship like that in your neighborhood. Why don't you address that fellowship and ask if you can be part of that as well? But maybe you say, but there, I don't know of any like that. Then through these programs, you can also have fellowship by hearing the Word of God and praising God together. And also I'll encourage you, if you prayed this prayer, I'll encourage you to contact our call center. There's people sitting there waiting for you to contact. And they will be willing and helpful in answering questions and talking with you and, um, and praying with you. And um, in that way, you'll get advice in what to do as the next step. These three things will help you follow Jesus. Now, thank you for watching this new life. Hope that you'll be with us again next week. May God bless you.